Good morning. Welcome back. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever seen the TV show The Masked Singer? Or maybe have you at least heard of it? My wife Amy is a fan, so I've seen a few episodes. It's basically a celebrity singing competition, but with a twist. No one knows which celebrities are participating because their true identities are hidden behind elaborate costumes and head-covering masks. Even their speaking voice is disguised when they talk. After watching a mask performance, celebrity judges try to guess the identity of the singer based on the sound of their actual singing voice and other performance factors, as well as clues about the celebrity that are revealed in each episode. And this is all great fun, but the real excitement is the big reveal at the end of each show when the loser for that episode must take off their mask and reveal to everyone their true identity. In our reading for today, we also have a big reveal. Jesus, whose identity had in essence been masked for his entire adult life, is now revealed to the world as the Christ, the Anointed One. Long foretold by the prophets, long awaited by his people, we see Christ publicly step into our place and into his role as the Savior of the world. We read from Luke chapter 3. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Luke's Gospel makes it clear that John the Baptist was the voice of one calling in the desert foretold by the prophet Isaiah, whose ministry was to prepare the way for the Savior. This ministry was twofold. First, he was a preacher of repentance. The word repent is used in two different ways in the Bible. Sometimes it only means to be sorry for sin. However, John's preaching of repentance also included the call call to faith in the coming Savior. We are told he exhorted and proclaimed the good news to them. But John did not only preach, he also baptized. The people who were baptized by him confessed their sins, and John announced the good news of the gospel to them. Therefore, John's baptism was an effective means of grace. The people John baptized were receiving forgiveness for their sins. So it's no wonder, then, that many thought he might be the promised Messiah. But John would have none of that. He clearly and forcefully corrected the people, explaining that his ministry was to prepare the way for the coming one, one who is infinitely more powerful, one who would baptize with the Holy Spirit, one who would ultimately be the judge of the living and the dead. John did not feel himself worthy even to untie the sandal strings of this promised one. How shocking, then, it must have been for John when, as all the people were being baptized, Jesus, the true Messiah, stepped into the Jordan River to be baptized by him. Why would the perfect Son of God come to be baptized? John was baptizing for the forgiveness of sins, but Jesus had no sin. We are told in the book of Matthew that John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? I'm the sinner. I need you to baptize me. We find Jesus' answer to John also in Matthew. He said, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. With his answer, Jesus does concede that logically this makes no sense. But now, at this moment, it was completely proper. What was so special about now? 
Was Jesus fulfilling some law of God or some legal requirement to be baptized? No. Jesus doesn't speak about his baptize as something that he was required to do. He said it was proper for him to do so at this point because he had to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he had to accomplish God's plan of salvation for us. This plan to make us righteous or holy again in God's eyes was enacted long ago. And his baptism was one of the pieces of the plan that had to be completed. It started in Bethlehem when he became one with us by birth. It continued throughout the first 30 years of his life as he lived a perfect life in our place. And now at his baptism, he was publicly beginning his mission as Savior of the world. By being baptized, he was declaring himself to be one with sinners like us. At this moment, we see Jesus publicly stepping in, taking up our burden of sin, and resolutely beginning his journey to the bitter and victorious end on Mount Calvary. So what does this mean for you and me? Every time we disobey one of God's commands, Christ steps in. Every time we fear, love, or trust something more than God, Christ steps in. Every time we fail to love our neighbor as ourselves, Christ steps in. Even though we all deserve the full extent of God's punishment, Christ stepped in once for all on the cross and took it for us. And now every time God looks at us, Christ steps in and covers our uncleanliness with his perfect robes of righteousness. What a momentous event in the history of mankind. The work of Christ begins. This could not go unnoticed. A big reveal was needed. So we are told that as Jesus was praying, an incredible sign was given, so that there could be no doubt that this was no ordinary baptism, and Jesus was no ordinary man. Heaven was opened. The glory of the Lord was revealed. And the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form like a dove, making public witness to the fact that this truly is the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. And the voice of the Father thundered from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. As Jesus began his public ministry, the Father put his public seal of approval on him. This is no mere mortal. This is the Son of God. Listen to him. Believe in him. To read the gospel simply as a story about a good man who is wrongfully put to death on a cross is to miss the point completely. It is the Son of God who stepped into our world to live a perfect life and die a perfect death so that now the Father can also say to sinners like you and me, You are my child, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, revered by the Magi and baptized by John, you stepped into our world to save us from sin and death. Let the good news of this salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Like John the Baptist, open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. And finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home, where we will stand unashamed in the full light of your glory and sing the everlasting song of triumph. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our hymn for today is called Christ Begins. It was written by two Wells pastors, Luke Thompson and Kent Reeder, when they were students at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. And it will be included as one of the many new hymns in our Synod's new hymnal that's being released at the end of this year. Each verse recounts one of the four events from Jesus' life that we remember during Epiphany the season of the church year we are now entering. That word epiphany comes from the Greek word for reveal, and each of these four events reveals something about the true nature of Christ. As you listen or sing along as you feel comfortable, try to identify the event of each verse, that each verse is describing and what it reveals about Christ.
Join me in thanking our singers today, Jenna Bickle and Rachel Vogel. <laughs> 